Zero accounting software, products and services. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage we set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in a bit, holding down control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel, currently at 175% scroll in opening the demo file but doing so with the reset item so we're going to reset the data and open the demo then we're going to open two tabs to put our financial statement reports in as we have done every time i'm going to hide this first right click the tab up top to duplicate it i'm going to right click the duplicated tab to duplicate it again back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down we want to go to the balance sheet and then on the tab to the right, accounting drop down, go into the income statement or profit and loss. Back to the tab to the middle, changing the date. And we're going to bring it on up, bring it on up to 2022. And so that's the setup process update that we have been doing every time. Going into the first tab now, in prior presentations, we've been looking at the cycles and just a quick recap of how the accounting system is basically constructed. The end result from a financial statement perspective, from a reporting perspective, are the financial statements. To construct them, the normal day-to-day -day transactions are entered with forms, which we want to be set up as easy as possible so we can hire someone, in essence, if we want to, to simply do the data input, or if we do it ourselves, the data input is as easy as possible to then create the financial transaction that constructs the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement related reports. Now to do that, we need the underlying foundation set up, such as the chart of accounts, which we talked about last time, which is the list of accounts that the financial statements are actually constructed from. And then we also, the next thing would be like the items that we would have to set up. So let's take a quick look at a flow chart here to think about that. Note that we often have been looking at things in cycle. That's, that's a good way to memorize things or visualize things. So the vendor cycle or the expense cycle, we expect money to be going out at the end of the cycle for goods and services we purchases. The customer cycle or revenue cycle, money's coming in at the end of the process we would expect for goods and services we provide to customers. And of course the employee cycle, money's gonna go out for the uh, purchase of services of employees so then uh, within these cycles that's when we have our data input forms and we can visualize the process of the data input forms many of these data input forms we are going to need items to be set up specifically like a, a invoice or if i have a point of sale uh, type of transaction like a, a check register for example on the money in type of form and possibly in a bill form if we're paying for inventory so for example the invoice if i'm billing clients for things that we did we want to be able to to have it populate as easy as we can and we saw that the invoice is actually a quite a complex uh, form to set up the, especially if inventory is involved there's a lot of action happening in it but if we set it up properly the data input is quite easy part of setting it up properly is going to be the items so if we have inventory items then clearly we need to track the inventory if we're doing it on a perpetual inventory system uh, within our accounting system even if we have service items you might think well i'll just do hourly service items but you want to kind of think more beyond that so if you're a bookkeeper for example you might not want to just charge hourly because that can actually be kind of tedious if you could break down say even like bookkeeping into fixed things that you are providing then that can make your billing easier and more standardized making it 
so that the customer can expect what they can expect a little bit more clear and it'll make the agony of doing the billing process a little easier oftentimes. So, and then on the purchase side, the bill, if we're tracking inventory within the accounting system is uh, something that we were gonna need items for as well. So if I close this out and I go back up just to look at those forms this way, if I see the invoice, we're gonna invoice the customer, then I would like someone that doesn't know much if I wanted to hire someone to be able to populate this as easy as possible. So if someone came to them and say, hey, what do I wanna purchase? I wanna purchase the golf balls or whatever. It populates automatically down here, which is nice. And if there's a sales tax, it populates automatically. Everything gets populated automatically. That's great. If it's a service item, it, it would populate automatically as well. So, so, and remember, if it's a service item, you still want to make, I already said, your billing process, you know, as easy as possible. So then if you go into the bill side of things, that's another form where you might be purchasing inventory. So we have a similar kind of things here with the items that we're going to need. If we have a purchase order, then that's another area of the purchasing cycle. So you have your items field where you got your items are going to be necessary. And then you could purchase things with just a money out form. So you might just spend money directly. And so that out of the checking account could be an area where you're buying inventory. You'd only have the items if you're buying inventory. And then on the money in form, uh, receiving money, then this would be like point of sale, like a like if you had a check register, you might sell the item. So you would like to be able to set it up. So if someone just comes to the cash register or something with whatever golf balls, we can add them pretty mindlessly. And notice this is the kind of area where if you have a self checkout, even you can see how the system can be set up. So you can kind of just check out your own stuff without knowing anything about what's going on uh, and run that through. That's because the whole system has been set up so that it runs pretty much automatically so a key component to that is the products and services so if i go down to the products and services that are currently in the system closing this out here they are down below so we've got our products and services uh, set up here now if we look at these items you can see the ones that are tracking the inventory in the system down below because we have the quantity item down below if we select one of these items then it's gonna give us detail on it. This one having the tracking of the actual quantity on hand, the five units, the average cost, the total here. If we wanted to edit the item, we can go up into the edit item up here and go into that information. We'll take a look at that more shortly. Closing this back out, if I go back to this field and I chose one that wasn't tracking inventory and go into the item, then we don't have that same units. So we still have the information for the item necessary to populate in an invoice, but we're not gonna have to purchase those items, for example, because it's gonna be like a service item possibly. So let's go back and let's add an item. Let's add a couple items from like the easiest to more difficult items. So let's just say that we're gonna say a new item and I'll say this is service item one. I'll just make a generic service item we're going to say that's the name. Now you could make an hourly service, but I would try to, to group my items in the format that I could, that I can kind of sell them in packages if, if possible and try to use hourly as the last resort. If I can't find some other way to kind of sort how I'm going to organize my service items. So then I'm not going to be purchasing uh, any items here because it's going to be a service item. All I need is the sales information. If there's gonna be an amount of the sales, I could say $100 for the amount of the sales price. Now note, if if you just have a, an, an item where you're gonna make up the price as you go, then then maybe you, you just put a zero on the price or something like that and adjust it as you create the invoice. But the more you can standardize it, the easier the process will be to do your billing process. And then the sales account is gonna be some kind of revenue account. And then taxes, in the United States, we don't typically have taxes oftentimes on the service items. So I'm gonna say uh, tax exempt here. So no tax on that one. I'll turn the tax on in a future example. So I'm gonna save that. And then if we were to post this to something, I'm gonna go up top and just let's open an invoice just to see that being populated. I'm gonna make up AAA customer 
and then we'll say that we have service item one let's say we have two of them so there it is no tax applied because we told it not to apply the tax and we've got the the 200 down below what would this do as we saw in the invoice it would increase accounts receivable by uh the 200 the other side would go to the revenue account which would be the sales item driven by the item that we set up the sales account driven by the item that we set up and the sub ledger for the a customer AAA would be impacted as well. We could do the same thing. I won't post it, but we could do the same thing if we did a receive money form and we had this item that we were selling receive money form. There it is. Let's go check in account and we can pick up our item here too. So it'd be service item. Boom. Similar kind of process. All right, let's go back to the dropdown, products and services. Let's make it a little bit more complex with the inventory. So now I'm gonna say, all right, let's say new item. And let's say this is inventory item one. Now you would want to be more specific on your inventory items. If you have inventory, you have a question of how am I gonna track inventory on a periodic system or a perpetual system? If it's a per periodic system, maybe you're not tracking it within the uh, zero system but outside of it possibly and then you're doing periodic adjustments in that case you would still even though you have inventory you wouldn't need to track the inventory within the system because you might be doing a physical count and tracking the inventory on excel or something making a periodic adjustment into the zero system however if you want to track the inventory real time within the system allowing the zero system not only to record the financial transactions to the balance sheet and income statement but also to a sub ledger tracking the units of inventory then we'd have to turn the inventory tracking on so now you got inventory on we're going to be having an inventory account that will be impacted on the purchases side of things we're going to buy inventory so now we've got a cost on the purchase that would let's just say it was we're going to buy this time for one 40 and then this is going to go to cost to goods sold so that means when we sell it it's going to go to the cost to goods sold account meaning we're going to we're going to decrease inventory and record the expense of cost to goods sold when we sell it with an invoice or a receive money form i'm going to say that there's a tax on the sales side of things and then description and then the add items the sales price we're going to sell for 200 let's say the sales account is going to be some kind of income account. And then I'm going to say there's a tax on the sale. So it's going to be applying the tax at uh, the point of sale. So now we've got sales tax involved in the United States. Oftentimes the sales tax is going to be when you, when you sell, you know, uh, inventory of, oftentimes to like the end user of the inventory and the sales tax will change, uh, depending on the state. It's a state and local tax here. So that'll be similar taxes. There's nothing new under the sun with taxes. It's just a question of, you know, taxes are quite old, right? So it's just a question of how, what tax are they using and where are they using it? And which one do I have to basically apply? And hopefully the software is set up thus that it can kind of help you to pick that up, which is quite nice. Now note that the taxes, this is one of the driving factors determining whether taxes will be put in place here. So in, in other words, if I go up to my form and I say, let's make a, a, uh, an invoice again, and we're going to make an invoice to, let's say AAA again, and we're going to say that the item is going to be this inventory one item. So now we could sell two of them or whatever. There's no quantity on hand, but that's okay. Well, I won't actually record it. But the point I want to just point out is now we've got the sales tax being calculated whether or not the sales tax is going to be applicable will be driven primarily by the item saying whether the item is going to be a taxable item or not so you can get more complex with that we might talk more we will talk more about sales tax uh, uh, in the in the future but generally usually what you have to consider is uh, is the is the taxable in the current location uh, taxed so then if it is you're gonna have to turn on the sales tax we have to set up the sales tax of course 
and then we have to ter determine in the system whether something is taxable or not. The primary term would be the the uh, item telling it whether it's going to be subject to, to the sales tax or not. And then we can also think about certain customers that might have different uh, tax obligations. Maybe a customer is not subject to sales tax. So then when we set up the customers, we can we can customize within the customers what tax they're going to be subject to based on their location, possibly, and possibly uh, whether or not they're not subject to tax because they're not the end customer or something like that. Now, notice that this invoice is actually quite complex in terms of the transaction, as we saw in the past. This is going to increase the accounts receivable by 437. It's going to increase the sales by 400. It's going to increase the accounts payable liability by 37. It's going to decrease the inventory by an amount not on here, but driven by meaning the numbers not here, but it's going to be, what do we say? 140 times two because of the units that we're selling. And it's going to record the cost of goods sold. So there's kind of a lot going on and it's going to record the accounts receivable sub ledger for the customer AAA and the sub ledger for the inventory items tracking not only the account of inventory but also the units of inventory so that's a lot going on but notice that the data input is so automatic that sh that you can even have like a, a self-checkout thing in the grocery store is basically recording all that with just someone that doesn't need to know much after it's all set up right and that's the, that's how we that's how we want to get things going so it's easy on us in the future or easy on someone we're hiring in the future to do the just the data input because the underlying fundamentals have been set up so this would be the same if i go into the uh, spend money form so you got a similar process i'm sorry not spend money if i go to receive money form and we go into the uh, checking account so then you've got a similar process where you'd have the item but now the difference being that we're going to increase uh, the checking account directly we can also go into the bill side of things now when we purchase items because now we're purchasing inventory so if i go into inventory item one now we're going to populate that to pay for the inventory on the increasing of inventory side of things we could also pay for the inventory with a money out form or a spend money form if we're buying inventory out of the checking account and you've got your inventory form here We've seen these forms in the past, so I won't go into them in too much detail here. And when you're purchasing, if you're using purchase orders to request inventory, again, you might have your inventory item here. Now also note that you can make, as we have seen in the past, these items as you go. So I can go and add an item as we go here and put the code and so on and track the items, similar data input screen to make the items. Now note, you want to be careful adding items as you go because ideally you'd like to set up the items already and especially if you're having someone else do the data input have them just use the items that have already been set up you don't, you don't really want people to be just making items like on the fly all the time unless you know that because that's going to get things are going to get kind of messy there so that's the general overview of the products and the services